Good morning, guys. It is Friday, October 4th, 2024. This is Bathrobe Business. I am out of coffee, but I still have the news. Uh, also, before we start, I just want to say uh, today is going to be 90 degrees here in Salt Lake City in October, October 4th. It's a record. So uh, I think it's fantastic. Go, go global warming. I think it's great. And don't forget, polar bears are godless killing machines. So don't feel bad for them. All right, uh, let's jump into it. So uh, the big news is the uh, port strike is over. So uh, the port strike ended last night uh, where the workers agreed to a tentative deal on wages and extended the real negotiations until January. So as part of the deal, they get a massive pay increase, uh, about 61% over six years under the current agreement. Uh, it comes out to like a structured uh, settlement where the union was asking for an increase of $5 per hour for every year of the six-year contract. So I think it's going to be a, a multi-six-term contract. And every time that new contract initiates, it's a $5 increase. Uh, now, what's interesting is with the port strike, they were talking about automation issues. So with the port strike, they were saying, we don't want to be automated. We want to hold those back in order to preserve jobs. That is still being negotiated. I honestly don't see how they're going to be able to get that. Uh, automation is the standard for any industry. It has been since the Industrial Revolution, uh, especially with features like AI. I don't think they're going to get that component of the deal. And I think even uh, back when the actors were on strike last year, it was one of the arguments being made. Um, was it the actor strike or the writer strike? One of those two. Uh, when they were uh, uh, striking, it was a, a question about AI and AI usage. And it was something they mentioned, but I don't think it made its way into the final deal uh, as powerfully as uh, the unions wanted it. Because I don't think you can negotiate something that says you will not automate, you will not advance an industry. Uh, so we'll see what comes of it in January. But the strike is over. So it only lasted about three or four days. I believe it started about Tuesday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so $15 billion in, uh, in cost. So not terrible, I guess. Uh, let's jump into the other headline story of the day, and that is jobs. So surprise, surprise, U.S. job creation totaled 254 in September, much better than expected. How much better than expected? Well, the Dow was estimating about 159,000. So almost 100,000 more jobs than estimated. Uh, this does not surprise me at all. Uh, it's almost as if rate cuts were useless and probably shouldn't have happened to begin with. What's interesting is, don't forget, this is September payroll. Why that's significant? Uh, usually there's uh, temporary jobs that come around in the summer. This isn't a surprise. Teenagers go to work. A lot of people in college go to work during the summer. People get second jobs. So summertime is usually a, a, a moment. A summer and I should say winter seasonal are a periods of overemployment because people are getting jobs they don't normally in the other times of the year. So technically, this number should be much lower. The fact that this number is up tells you that the job market isn't just strong. It is booming. Uh, unemployment rate fell again to 4.1%. Uh, the interesting thing is, they revised previous job numbers. So August totals revised up another 17,000 and July's revised up another 55,000. So in other words, each month uh, in the last three months has actually been higher than estimated. And then we got this monster number, which may be revised even higher in another month. So that's, that's insane. That is crazy. Now, in response, the 10-year Treasury yield is actually up, which isn't good for uh, most people because that is the number that's most closely tied to mortgage rates. So the 10-year Treasury yield went up uh, by 11 basis points to uh, 3.967, so it was 3.85. And uh, 15 basis points on the two-year treasury. So again, this is why the rate cuts have not helped consumers at all. Because a lot of these rates are based off of bond yields. And this means that the uh, interest rate for most mortgages is going to go up. Whereas hedge funds, private equity firms, major banks now can borrow at lower rates. So all that rate cut did was help Wall Street and not Main Street. This is what I constantly talk about of why rate cuts should not be happening, why we should be raising interest rates. And what's funny is this article still talks about the fact that, oh, rate cuts are coming. They're just not going to be as severe as we've seen. Uh, it's not going to be half basis points. It's not going to be a full basis point. It's going to be, uh, you know, just a little quarter basis points here or there. 
I think that's insane. I think that's absolutely insane to be talking about rate cuts when you've got job numbers this strong. And uh, in addition, I didn't mention the best part. So in addition to all that, uh, wage growth is also up. So uh, in addition to that, uh, strength uh, creation split over wages, hourly earnings increased 0.4% for the month. And we're up 4% from a year ago. So wait, and that's not surprising because I reported, what was it back, I think in June, that wages were up uh, nationally across the board in, in places that you wouldn't even imagine were in rural areas, in backwater areas. Wages were up everywhere. It was an Axios story. So for, we are up 4% in wages from a year ago. So if I was to say what an inflation number was, I don't know, maybe it's 4%, seeing as how wages are up 4%, seeing how jobs are stronger than ever before. And yet they want to cut into this climate. They want to cut into a scenario where uh, homes are already expensive and have not dropped down. Every ref inflation report shows that housing is on the rise. The cost of housing is on the rise. Uh, you've got payrolls going up. You've got job creation going up. And they want to cut into this market. Don't you think that might be a recipe for disaster? I don't know. I think I, it might be. Uh, speaking about housing, let's talk about Utah. So. Uh, median home price in Salt Lake City Metro is up again. So the median home price in Salt Lake City spiked again this summer, approaching 2022's record high. Uh, that was when, what, interest rates were like at 1%. Uh, the median price reached 549000 in July, the highest since its peak of 560 in May of 2022. That was before all the rate increases started happening. Uh, what we're seeing is falling rates. We're not. Uh, tied to some September interest rate cuts were not. Uh, on the other hand, lower interest rates could free up some Utah housing. So that's making the argument of will this lower interest rates uh, uh, costs of homes or not? It's not. So home prices are already in Salt Lake on the rise. We've reported that in every single refl inflation report, housing costs and uh, rents are on the rise. And now we're cut, trying to cut into this climate as well. So yes, everything is going up in price. Inflation is very much real. Uh, so those are the main stories of the day. I do want to uh, share two fun stories before we go. Uh, so the first is Wendy's to release SpongeBob Krabby Patty collab. Uh, so this is for SpongeBob uh, fans. Wendy's is celebrating 25th anniversary of SpongeBob SquarePants with a Krabby Patty cheeseburger and new pineapple under the sea frosty. Uh, this is a limited time menu that launches on October 8th. Now, you might be asking, why is a podcast that focuses on business talking about SpongeBob and Wendy's? Well, because I think this is a great idea for a business. Now, this is clearly a business uh, that only, I think, retail and uh, restaurant can do. But collaborations are a great way to grow and a great way to advertise uh, because I'm not a huge Wendy's fan. I mean, I'm, I've got nothing against that. I just don't eat there very often. When I do, it's usually their salads. Uh, but... Uh, it sounds interesting. I will totally get it. I want to see what a Krabby Patty tastes like. And I'm not even a SpongeBob fan. I never even watched this show when I was growing up. Uh, but I want to see what a cartoon cheeseburger tastes like. Uh, just the other day when I was at the store, I made a stupid impulse buy. I bought the little, I don't know, six ounce, four ounce Coca-Cola cans, a six pack for $4, which I think is too expensive, but inflation. Uh, but I bought it because it was Oreo flavored. I don't even drink soda. And I thought, I want to see what an Oreo soda tastes like. Uh, at the same time that when I was at the store, I saw Doritos Sushi. I bought that as well. Uh, both were disappointing, by the way. No need to try them. Uh, the Oreo Coca-Cola tastes exactly like regular Coke. And I know my flavors. I know taste. You see this? That's a geographic tongue. And I'm a super taster. I did the test. So I can test taste anything. And I could not taste the Oreo. And the Dorito stuff didn't taste very good either. You couldn't taste the Doritos. And it was kind of stale. So don't get either. But I bought them, didn't I? And I'm going to buy this. So if you have a restaurant, if you can think of a collaboration with uh, another restaurant or in some way integrating another flavor into your foods, or if you're a product, then there's any way you can do a collaboration. I think this is great marketing. I think it pays for itself, and I think it draws a lot of attention. Another interesting story, this is probably something I'm going to try today. Uh, so there is a new AI out there. Uh, it's called Notebook LM, and it's from Google. Uh, and it's gone viral because what it does is it creates podcasts 
based off of documents that you get give it. So uh, essentially, you give it a document and it has a, a two hosts having a conversation about it. Uh, and it talks about how somebody just used the word fart and poop, and it created a 10-minute riff podcast about two podcast hosts talking about it. It integrates pauses, words like, um, eh, little things like that, and it creates a, a podcast from your content. Now, why this is interesting, what I'm going to try with this is we're launching a new product uh, on our lab side. Uh, it's going to be a product that uh, we want to launch before the end of October, and we're creating literature for it. We're creating uh, contracts for it, all sorts of in, uh, uh, documents and things like that. So I have a lot of content. I'm going to pump it into this thing and see what it produces. And then if it's good, I'm probably going to post it on our company, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, you name it. Uh, so as a business, I think you should try this and let me know if it works well. I think this is very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So those uh, are the stories of the day. I hope you guys have a productive day. I hope you have a great weekend and hopefully I'll see you back here Monday.